tripod was a good investment. Mm -hmm. We are on. Welcome back to Coffee with Me. Grab your coffee. I wanted to mention there's a one volume uh, commentary on the whole Bible that should be on everybody's shelf. It's called the Jerome Biblical Commentary. <clears throat> the Jerome, can you hear me all right? The Jerome Biblical Commentary. I better put that on the board. It's really worth having. It, it, looks, it gives you a whole lot of information that you can't get anywhere else, and, and especially in one volume. Come on, then. Come up. I just had to refresh it. So far, I don't have any time. Oh, you can't read my handwriting. Yeah. That says Jerome. Oh, jeez. Never mind. I'll put it down here. Your own biblical commentary. And uh, it has a chapter on every book of the Bible, and chapters on Revelation and so on. Uh, it's just a fantastic one volume work. You can get it on Amazon. Has it uh, at a pretty good price, I think. I don't know what it runs now. <laughs> when I got mine, it was forty dollars. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> I just want to do a few more introductory things before we get to the Gospel of, of uh, Mark, just because it will all be on the same page when we say these things, and you know what I'm. <laughs> you'll know, you'll know what I'm uh, uh, talking about when, when I when I say these words. And, and the first of them I wanted to mention is the word synoptic. That's why N O P T I C. The synoptic gospels. The synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and they're called synoptic because it means with with one glance you can see that they're similar. Uh, they, they, they all have the same, not exactly the same, they all have their own flavor, but they they're basically uh, contain the same information, some more elaborate and some additional, but, but the, they're, they're, they're synoptic with one, with one glance, you can see that, which means, but they're very different from John, or John is very different from the synoptics. John is much later than the synoptics, John is much more theological than the synoptics. And you have John writing theology rather than, than telling the story of Christ, in the, uh, which is, is in, the, uh, in the synoptics. Okay, the pre order of presentation in the Bible is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's how they're presented. But the order of writing, probably more than likely, let's say the order of writing was Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. Okay, Mark is called the Proto-Evangelium. In case you do some research, you want to know that word Proto-Evangelium means the first gospel. Mark, you'll see it in, in the Latin, Proto-Evangelium, when you research this. The, um, uh, anyway, that's, uh, that word is important. To know because because Mark is the first, and that's that's what <laughs> that's why we study it first of all because it is the first. It's the first gospel. <clears throat> the question that, that we'll look at when we start to look at, in, at, at chapter one of the uh, one of the questions as we look at, the, at one chapter one of Mark is who is John the Baptist? See, in in the in the Gospel of Mark, uh, who, who is John the Baptist? Who does he resemble? Who is he? What figure is he? And that's important because it, it helps us to realize who, who, who Mark sees Christ is. Let's see, what else did I have? Anything else? Pre, uh, pre Gospels, pre study of the Gospel. Uh, 
Yeah, an important source of, of information for the study of scripture is the Dead Sea Scrolls. How many of ever how many of you have ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? I have, I have. <laughs> <laughs> And the Dead Sea Scrolls, when I was a, a boy, uh, they were breaking. They, they had just been uh, uh, made dues. Uh, the Dead Sea, I think you, you're familiar with me. I will treat you to, to my uh, cartographic uh, abilities. <clears throat> The Holy Land. <laughs> <laughs> Not an amoeba, as one of my students once thought it was. Uh, and the north, the, the northern part of the Holy Land is Galilee, huh? And uh, the Sea of Galilee. If you go there now, it'll be called the Sea of Galilee. Mm, it's had various names. One name it bore for a long time was the Sea of Tiberius, and you'll see that in the scriptures too, the Sea of Tiberius. It, it just means that that when Tiberius was emperor, that's when that was written. <laughs> it was named for the emperor. So uh, the Sea of Galilee and the River Jordan, which empties into the Dead Sea. Now, up over here, let's get rid of this put the label down here, Dead Sea. You know, if, you, if you're instructing young people now, you can't use cursive writing. <laughs> because my college students, the last classes I had, were, were the first that they, they never had never learned cursive writing, so they couldn't read my handwriting. I said, is my handwriting that bad? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Dead Sea. Uh, and up off near the Dead Sea, right off the Dead Sea, is a, an area, a town really called Qumran. Q-U-M-R-A-N. And if you're driving around there, as I was, you might find it spelled with a K. Uh, in some places, K U M R A N, but it's it's properly Q U M R A N Qumran. It's behind. It's okay. <laughs> this is the area, uh, the the town of Qumran. Now, it's arid. This is all very desert. And this is the this, uh, Judea. In other words, Galilee is 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 lush and and, and green and. And up here, the bananas uh, grow up here. Down here, it's, it's pure desert. This is pure desert. This is just uh, sand and, and dirt and, and, and mountains. But uh, the mountains are, are just desert mountains. Well, there's some desert mountains over here in Qumran. And back in 1940, mid-40s, there was a, a shepherd who had his, his sheep uh, driving them around looking for, for um, feed, for grass, for something growing that they could eat. And they, <coughs> they would go up the little mountains and down the little mountains because there might be a, a few blades of grass growing in the top. Uh, so they would go up and, and, and drive the sheep up and drive them down. Some kind of, uh, it's okay, some kind of grain, uh, pardon me, some kind of uh, uh, something green. Well, the shepherd was, was doing that, shepherding his sheep, looking for, for he was a young, young shepherd, a uh, teenager, and he... <laughs> He, he was aware, he was a good shepherd because he was aware there was a squall uh, storm coming up off the Dead Sea. And you could see the clouds moving in. 
and so he wanted to keep the sheep safe. And the only place he could keep them safe would be to find a cave. Okay. A little longer? A little. <laughs> to find a cave. <laughs> he so had to get a mic. He would, yeah. And so he, he, he found one. He found this cave right at Qumran. And an opening and he he wasn't sure if it was safe so he took uh, some pebbles and went to the mouth of the cave and he threw the pebbles in he, 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 was, he was a smart young, young lad he, he was listening to hear if the pebbles hit the ground or if they didn't hit the ground if they didn't hit if, if they heard them swish and then hit then he knew that it there, there was a fall off, and the ship, sheep would not be safe in there. But he heard them. He didn't hear either one. What he heard was crack, crack, crack. <laughs> so he went in to examine what was there. It was um, crocks uh, of, of made of uh, earthenware, uh, containing leather. Containing leather uh, scrolls, so he, he he took some of the some of the scrolls out and drove the sheep in so that they could get out of the storm. He took these the, these scrolls and wasn't sure what they were. Had no idea what they were. So okay. He he had no idea. And so he what he did was uh, try try to find out. He he brought them to. Uh, uh, a shoemaker asked the shoemaker, "These are leather. Do you want to buy them for to to make shoes?" No, he didn't want them. Uh, and he went to various places with these with these scrolls. Wound up and selling them to an antiquer because the antiquer recognized that there was antiquity uh, associated with them. So this anti uh, he he bought them, put them in his shop. Sometime later, some French scripture scholars were vacationing at the Dead Sea. There's, you can go in to the Dead Sea, I don't know if you've had people go in there and, and uh, it's supposed to be health giving. I had a, went to toward the Holy Land with a Baptist minister friend and he, he went in and he accidentally gulped water while he was in there and he was sick all that night. He was, it's, it's, it's very high sodium content, it's very, very high. Salt. As a matter of fact, if you've seen it or if you haven't seen, you'll see uh, rock salt all around it, where where it's it's just um, evaporated and, and made these big balls of, of salt. There. Anyway. Well, this the um, antiquers uh, uh, anyway sold these um, scrolls to some French scripture scholars who recognized that not only were they scripture, but they were portions, they, they were something labeled Isaiah uh, that they'd never seen before, and that no one ever had seen before. And they were just, they were from an ancient library. Uh, they were from the, the library at Qumran. They, what had happened was, there was Qumran, had a group of, of religious Jews called Essenes. Essenes, that was their group. They were, they were Essene Jews. And now these Essenes had their own village, but no one knew this. But they had their own village there. They had their own monastery. They they were pre-Christian by hundreds of years, but they had they were Jewish uh, monks, and they one of the things they had was a library, and the the library was of course all written on these scrolls, and the scrolls were stored, and and so they when the when the 
the Romans came and were going to were destroying everything, they hid the, the, the books in the cave. See, they hid the, the crocs in the cave so that they'd be safe. They didn't want their library to, to, to be, to be uh, <coughs> destroyed. So the books were hidden then in the cave. And uh, they had never been touched again since, uh, since they were hidden there until this, this little shepherd found them. And so that was the origin then of the Dead Sea, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was the, the, the began the French then began digging through through this area and discovered it was not just just one cave. There was a series of caves, and and all these caves were functioned in some fashion for to, for this community of, of Essenes. Father, do we know what period that was in? At what time? Oh, very, pre very pre-Christian. <laughs> yeah. Um, through um, through the Roman invasions. Uh, well, let's see. What they found was was. Um, very important to the study of scripture. It revolutionized the study of scripture. The problem with these old uh, scrolls was once they hit the the air, <laughs> they disintegrated. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but unfortunately, uh, they were most of them were opened and all before they, before they realized they could, it. Yeah, before they could do anything about it. So they had to be reassembled. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a, uh, years of reassembling these by scripture scholars all over the world. I, had, uh, I was taught by uh, scripture uh, by Raymond D. Brown, mm -hmm. a very, uh, very well known, somebody in rest in peace. He was a very fabulous teacher. And what he did was, was uh, worked on, on reassembling these uh, in, in, uh, in Qumran. They would set up huge tables and, and just empty out the crock, and then the scholars would, would try to fit them together um, based on words and so on. And they found parts of Isaiah and, and, uh, that had never been uh, seen before and, and so on. They were just fantastic discoveries. Well, that's important to know who these people are because John the Baptist in, in Mark 1, John the Baptist is thought to be a, an Essene. Uh, yeah. John was thought to be an Essene. He was thought to be one who uh, uh, belonged to these people. Probably, I'll get to John as we look at the chapter 1, but I think he's... Uh, I don't think he was, uh, this is not important if he was in that scene or not, we'll put it that way. Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting chimes. Okay, do you have any questions? <laughs> okay, all, all of the, if you have questions, uh, you can, uh, Send them into uh, the comments to, to Kim under in the comments section. Just uh, send them in, and we'll do our best to address them for you. Look at um, at uh, Mark. We'll start the, the looking at Mark's gospel together. Always bring bring your Bible uh, to the to the study. Bring your Bible, and uh, that way you can follow along. I use the Jerusalem Bible. You can use any translation that you like. I use this particular Bible. as I call it my teaching Bible. All my notes are in this Bible. This is the one that was given to me in uh, 1969, I think it was. And I, it was brand, brand new then of the Jerusalem Bible. There's a new one called the New Jerusalem Bible, which has some correct, some more information and some corrections in it, but um, either one is fine. Uh, we're not that technical. 
But I, I, I think you should write in your Bible. You should have one just for study, and, and that should, you should write in it and keep your notes. Uh, it's nice, too, uh, to use your Bible for prayer when you do take a section that you're reading and praying and meditating, but when you have an insight, those insights are, are God-given, and you should uh, write them down, write them in your Bible. You write key words, anyway, in your Bible so that you remember, be able to recall uh, what those insights are. Okay, Mark, Proto-Evangelium, the first gospel. Mark, Mark. <laughs> Mark, chapter 1. Let me get to Mark. I think I marked Mark. Mark, Mark. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read from the uh, Jerome... Uh, version, um, partly the uh, Jerusalem version, and you can, uh, you can adapt it, but it's, it, they all read about the same, the beginning of the, the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, uh, and the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <clears throat> Gospel means good news. That's what the word the word means, the good news. So you say, well, this is the good news. This is the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. And the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, Jesus is both the message and the messenger. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the deliverer of the message, but he's also the, the, uh, the message. He's also the the one who's being delivered. Now, as is written in the in the book of the prophet Isaiah, and uh, Isaiah is quoted, look, I'm going to send my messenger before you. Who's the messenger? John the Baptist. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. So jo uh, John and Jesus together fulfill the Old Testament promises. John is the forerunner, and, and Jesus is the fulfillment. And so, so that Isaiah, what is Mark saying here? Isaiah is being fulfilled. The prophet is being fulfilled in John and Jesus. That's, that's what the gospel writers keep, keep wanting us to know. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now, the, that's, the baptism and repentance are two ideas that show up in the old literature from Qumran. Not only the, the, the scriptural, but, but the Qumran literature, called QL, Qumran literature. The Qumran literature not the scripture from Lither, from Qumran, but, but what they used, for what these Essenes used for their monastic life, is their literature. And in it, they teach baptism and repentance. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is very pre-Christian. So the ideas, you see, are very pre-Christian as well. See, all Judea and the people, this is in verse 5, and the people of, of uh, Jerusalem made their way to him, and as they were baptized by him in uh, the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. Now John wore a garment of camel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. John wore a garment of, <laughs> in his description, uh, goes on uh, throughout. He's described as he's described as as a uh, uh, in the book of Numbers, chapter six. Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, Numbers. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. 
Number six. He's described as, as a Nazrite. The, the N-A-Z-R-I-T-E, Nazrite. This is, this is uh, within Judaism. <laughs> within Judaism, there is a group, you could make a vow, or you be dedicated to God as a Nazrite. There's some famous Nazrites. There's some famous Nazrites beside John the Baptist. Samson, that's the, that's the other famous, most famous Nazrite. Now, that these, one, of the, one of the things about Nazrites is they were never able to cut their hair. So that's why Delilah Samson. could see she could take the strength from, from, from Samson by cutting his hair gotcha. because he was under the Nazarite vow. And so uh, devious. <laughs> devious action, but it worked. Still working today. <laughs> Here's Nazarite, let's see. God uh, spoke to Moses. This is from, from Book of Numbers, chapter six describes the Nazarite vow, and it describes what John the Baptist was under. And um, spoke to Moses and said, Say this to the son of Israel, If a man or a woman wishes to make a vow, the vow of the Nazarite, by which he is pledged to God, he shall abstain from wine and strong drink, and uh, neither drink the juice of grapes, nor eat grapes, fresh or dried, for the... Um, Duration of his vow, he shall touch nothing that comes from the vine, not even mm, the dregs of the uh, grape juice. As long as he is bound by his vow, no razor shall touch his head. No hair cutting. Until the time of his consecration to Yahweh is completed. Am I okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, so you get the idea now. This is here, grow freely. John is probably a Nazarite and an Essene. You see, he does both. So, so Mark, will, uh, Mark will go out of the way to describe him now. His, his dress, see, he's his dressed like a Nazarite. <laughs> he's, dressed, he's dressed like... Uh, Okay, let's go to uh, verse 9, uh, where Jesus is baptized. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come up out of the water than he saw the heavens torn apart. You see this in Isaiah and, and some of the, I won't cite, I'll go to all these citations, but... Um, you see it in, uh, uh, in in the scripture, the tearing open of the heavens, mm -hmm. and the psalmist prays, "Tear open the heavens, see, and speak to me." <laughs> so, tear, the heavens being torn open. So here they're being, the heavens are torn apart, and when the heavens are torn apart, the eschaton has begun. You see, the end of times is at hand. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, and the spirit, like a dove, descending on him, and a voice from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, my favor rests on you. In such, see, he overthrows Satan's power. He's, my favor rests on you. He is now God's instrument over Satan. He 
He is the opposite of Adam. He redeems the sin of Adam. See, Adam and Eve brought evil. He redeems and he brings goodness. He's the opposite. He undoes, undoes what they did. Now, immediately after this happens, that in Mark's Gospel, then the uh, this is verse uh, twelve. Uh, the son of uh, afterwards, the spirit drove him uh, into the wilderness, and he remained there forty days and was tempted by Satan. Okay, there's a number of things here that are of interest and, and key to understanding. He, he was, first of all, he wasn't, I don't know how your Bible translates, drove him into the, into the wilderness, but the, the, uh, the Greek is actually ex forcefully expelled him, threw him out, like, like, like an old... Uh, Charlie Chaplin movie, being thrown out of a bar, you know. He was thrown out. He was thrown out into the wilderness, forcefully, without any um, uh, hesitation. <clears throat> so he's thrown out into the wilderness. Into the wilderness. Why the wilderness? The wilderness is the habitat of, of, of uh, doubts. See, in the, in the, doubts. Yeah, habitat of devils in the in the, uh, in the in the old Jewish belief. That's where devils lived in the wilderness. So they threw him, see, and right after his baptism, he was, he was trying to get him. They throw him right out to these devils to get him, get rid of that baptism. See. So they're tempting yeah. him right away. Yeah, mm -hmm. immediately. See, that's the idea. He's tempted, and there he's tempted by Satan. See. And, and <laughs> he was with the wild beasts, and the angels looked after him. Now it says he remained there forty days. Forty in the in the Bible, both Old and New Testament, forty doesn't mean forty. It means an extended period of time. It means a long time. <laughs> the, the American Indians I worked with used to say, "Long time." You say, "How long?" Long time. <laughs> <laughs> When will you be back? In a long time. <laughs> That's what's going on. It's a long time. There's no knowing how long. Just that it's 40 days, 40 nights. It rained 40 days, 40 nights in Genesis. See, it doesn't mean 40 actual days. It means for a long period of time. See? Wherever you see 40, it means that in, in, the, in the Bible. Long period of time. And he was tempted by Satan. <clears throat> uh, but he was with the wild beasts and the angels looked after him. So mm. you know, this is for you, dear reader, <laughs> Mark is saying. <laughs> so that you can, uh, don't worry, he said the angels were there looking after him. We're tested every day. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the, the temptations are theological. There are the theological temptations of Christ, I think. I think Matthew spells them out. Um, and they are, you know, to become the Messiah, a political Messiah, to, to, to do grand things and so on, uh, rather than to, to be the Messiah of salvation. Am I running over time? About, about five, ten minutes. More? Mm -hmm. Okay. Me off because my watch isn't working. And maybe give an, <laughs> an assignment for reading. Okay. We need an assignment. Okay. <laughs> well, I treat you like my students. <laughs> <laughs> read the Gospel of Mark, it would be your assignment. <laughs> read, read and study the Gospel of Mark. There you go. Uh, uh, I will be prepared with at least one question. I will read, I, you know, that means you've really studied it. I, I'm, I'm not sure how far we'll get, you know, each time. That's why I can't say. So I'd say if you, if you do the first, uh, first chapter, mm -hmm. first two chapters, first three chapters. Okay. That might be three. enough for okay. the first three chapters. That might be enough for the next time. That sounds good. You want to stop there? Or? If you're if you're comfortable. Uh, anytime.
Okay. I can talk forever, so. <laughs> well, if that's a good stopping point. It's a good stopping point for me. And okay. And then just pick up there next, next time. Next Tuesday. Okay. Same bat time, same bat that's station. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And did we have any? No. No question. Not yet. Homework, read first three chapters on Mark. There you go. Did you? Mm-hmm. She just put them in. I just put it in. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. See you next Tuesday. There's no business like show. She said homework. <laughs> Thanks, Patty.